How to find me? What to do, find me? Happy Indigenous Day. Auto talk sign is what I push. Indigenous is too close to be to being the meaning of improvident, like indigent is. The word indigent means to be in poverty or in destitute. So indigenous is supposed to be different, but we're gonna just start using auto talk sign. Autotoctan means you from that place, you risen from the soil, like the Bible is talking about. If you still ain't look this up, you need to go look this up. This is road tobacco. It's in my rolled up papers, it's in my papers. Shout out Wayne. <laughs> United Nations Declaration of on Indigenous, on the rights of Indigenous people. We don't really have to wait for rights for nobody, y'all, because we already got our rights literally from being just naturally what we call common law. But beyond that, we do need to know the contracts that we entered in and that we indulge in every day. <clears throat> from housing contracts, car contracts, you know what I'm saying, whether it's a housing community or whether you're leasing or buying cars or da-da-da. Residential, but that's another video. That's going to be my financial literacy videos. You know what I'm saying? Today we just talking about how we know we are talk times or indigenous of America. Right here, again, go read the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. You know I bought the paperwork out, baby. It's my paperwork again on Ancestry.com. I don't tell y'all to do the blood test. No blood test. Do the paperwork. The paperwork will tell you exactly where you're from. You dig what I'm saying? I got answers that go back to the 1776. The year of the Constitution. With no indigenous servitude paper. So you're not going to tell me that they came off the boat on cargo and they didn't have one of these. One second. Remember, I tell y'all, don't think short. Think in a broad perspective. That's why it's always an advantage and a disadvantage. It's always a disadvantage and an advantage. You gotta look at your whole board. It's chestnut checkers. But anyway, the advantage and the fact that I have a 16 great grandfather that do come from England shows that everything was on papyrus, because that's what everything was on. And they would have had us on papyrus. Unless the slavery they were doing was illegal, which it was. But they would have had us on papyrus because it, the illegal slavery was a ditch of servitude. And this is my 16th great grandfather, Anthony Lowe. I'm sorry, my 17th great grandfather, Anthony Lowe, selling my 16th great grandfather into a ditch of servitude to Britain because they was from England. Britain had England's as slaves, the ditch of servitudes. And this is how they came over here by teaching the people skills and trades on how to build a town and then gifting houses and property to them people who know how to build so they can build their town up. You feel what I'm saying? This is called the hundreds. Look it up. Look up the hundreds, literally spell a hundred at a S. H-U-N-D-R-E-D-S, the hundreds. My people right here came here and Henry Lowe was allowed to sail here with another skillsman or a tradesman that was gifted property so they can build a town in St. Mary's. St. Mary's County was started by my great grandfather and my indigenous grandmother that he married when he came over and named Susanna, like the river. This is a fact, you know what I'm saying? Again, you can look at this again. All this is on Ancestry.com. According to the Freedom of Information Act, they scraped up all the paperwork they can. Let's go back to the 1500s right here, the paper I'm holding. Let's go back to 1552 to be specific. That's how much papyrus and papers and documents England had them on. All this has been digitized, so you can see most of it. Now, my family like this that I was telling you about, you can't see all that paperwork, but the fact that they were just registered in the federal census. Because the federal census, the federalists, 
who was trying to make this one union was the ones coming around, locking on doors and all this other stuff, tents or whatever, and trying to recruit people to be part of the United States after they separated the state from the church. Now we have another conversation about them in uh, United States separating the states from the church because they first came over here converting people into religion, a legion. The legion made you, uh, was one of the various contracts, if you want to say, that helped them come over here and come share crop and learn how to grow food and vegetables and stuff. Again, they started growing beans in Holland, England. Who taught them that? Us. We taught them how to hybridize food. Corn comes from America. Hybridized over 8,000 years ago. So that means one thing, see, when they tell you something, you got to see the details in it. When they tell you that corn is from America over 8,000 years ago, and it was hybridized, then you got to understand that somebody 8,000 years ago, which is 6,000 BC, understood matter, and they can see things that you couldn't see with the negative eye today without microscopes. How do they do it? Do we have the same technology that we have now? That's a whole other topic. And again, I'm not one of these YouTubers, so I guess I do need to start acting like a YouTuber and tell y'all to subscribe, subscribe, like, you know what I'm saying, and share. You know what I'm saying? Because all our people need to know this. I'm more like on some message stuff. I'm, I'm just the, the, the messenger. I'm the man with the trumpet. It's time to blow the trumpet. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, these people right here are from my grandmother's, I mean, from my mother's side, how I know because they're from Georgia. They're from the Yamasee tribe. That's how much research I did. Go do your homework on the Yamasee tribe, controlling all of Georgia and South Carolina, and making the trade routes that now, today, they lay roads on, concrete roads on. So this is why it's a benefit in knowing that our history, because first we be treated, we're supposed to be treated as nationality, as nationals, I'm sorry. Two, we're supposed to have a different uh, curriculum, a different format, a different methodology, and a different lifestyle from how they got everybody else living. Everybody else is tourists, really. That's no offense, that's just what it is. Anyway, this is my grand. This is my mother's side, going back to Georgia, and here they are going all the way back to 1776, which is way before the Constitution was written. And as you see, they're traveling on the south, on the east, whole east coast. You got them in Georgia right here, going all the way back. And then as soon as you get back to my great, 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 great grandma, so this is my seventh great grandmother, because I know this is my fourth. They go into North Carolina, where Tuscaroyans come from. And I have another aunt that's coming from Pennsylvania. And then moved to Georgia. You see what I'm saying? And she's the one, or well, had a husband, I'm sorry, and we don't know who the husband was, that made Richard. And he carried off from Georgia and da da da. You see what I'm saying? And that's just my grandmother's father's side. Her mother's side, again, which come from Georgia, that stuff stops because these people was near the Antoine Mounds. These people was literally in Georgia and Alabama. And not coming from uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. Her father's side is coming from Alabama and in between Georgia. And do your homework on the Antoine Mounds, where I showed y'all. You can go do your YouTube, me on Hugh Nation, going to the Antoine Mounds. The Antoine Mounds are right there near the borderline of Alabama and Georgia. And that's what my grandmother's fathers come from on my mother's side so i'm saying real real natives and this is why they're not all on paperwork they were still part of the tribes and stuff you get, get what i'm saying this is how you got to fill your own blanks if, if you was coming off a cargo ship which is impossible you cannot make it over here from africa to over here going through the storm ships you had to do what the vikings did and take and take the ship up north through the uh icebergs then you got to dodge for icebergs so you better on feet kind of and just uh, shat telling your shit with you. You see what I'm saying? But that's another conversation again. You gotta know that's impossible. Two, they would have had paperwork on the slaves that they took. Three, you wouldn't be going back to 1776. See what I'm saying? Not in America. See what I'm saying? And again, if that was coming off, if she was coming off a boat in 1776, then they would have had the slave auctions. And all of this accounting for where she came from in Africa and all of this. They don't have it because that's not what happened. You are a prisoner of war. And they enslaved you on your own land after you taught them how to grow food and how to get residue off your land, which is the richest.
and Mad Rike. It's called some Murder Kush. And he's gonna go into that. I'm gonna read out of it all. Okay, so this is Henry Lowe proving that I was what I was talking about. And this is his father, Anthony Lowe, which goes back to the 1600s, and I have his father's father, which goes back to the 1500s. Henry Lowe specifically in 1652. And I got his father's father, which went back 100 years ago, which is 1552, like I was telling you. And like I told you, he married my great grandma, my 16th great grandmother, who was an indigenous, named Susanna Maria Burnett. And of course, she took their last names. And Burnett is another family that they was trading with across in Virginia. The Virginia family after Burnett was colonists who was getting taught by the World Sock Indians. Look at that up. World Skyhawk, I'm sorry. W-A-R-R-A-S-K-A-K. -A 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 World Skyhawk or Sky Oak. They spelled it two different ways because remember, they just heard it and they wrote it down how they heard it. But the Bennett families was in business with the World Sky Oaks across from St. Mary's, which across from St. Mary's is actually Virginia. And um, again, Henry Lowe and them was invited to start a whole colony, which was across from Virginia, which was St. Mary's in Maryland. So this is why her last name is Bennett, which she didn't have a last name. This is why much, again, research I did, and I was smart enough to say, okay, even if they came from Africa, they didn't have a surname. They didn't have a last name. We went by our attributes, which is our first name, so-called, and then we went by, like, again, Susanna, and then we went by our tribes and our empire. So that's where I can catch them at. This would make me do the homework on Bennett, then I seen the Bennett family and how they traded with the world Sky Oaks, Sky Oak Indians right there. And this is how I know that she come from again. She come from personally, again, on this side. She was in Maryland on this time, at this time. That's the ones again that come from let me show you. My grandmother's side, who again was in North Carolina too. And also Pennsylvania. So they're coming after So I got the paper wrong, y'all. This is it, because that's the one they go to 1552. They're coming after Nancy. So Nancy was born from this family. Half England and half indigenous. So I'm saying that by the time it goes down, as you see me now, I'm 99% indigenous. He's 1% going by the 1600s and 1500s. You see what I'm saying? And this is actually the law of the land. Let me let that pop back. This actually was the law of the land, just like it's common law now. When Spanish people come across the border and they have a baby here, then they are already American. They accept it here. Same thing that was going on there. We started that. You're going to be here by bloodline. You, other than that, you're a tourist. You're a visitor. You're a pilgrim. You're a migrant. You're not American. You have to be by bloodline. So in a way, that would still make me indigenous, even if you was just my grandfather, and it only made me 65%. But without that, that's what's on American Covenant, and we can talk about that later, about how to um, verify your bloodline, and if you are indigenous, because a lot of us have, you know, you might have African in you, or you might have European in you, because again, all these people was coming over here in the 1600s. Not you. You was already over here teaching you people how to maneuver. And if that's the case again, I'll do another YouTube on how to validate, you know what I'm saying, validate yourself. If you're definitely more than 50% indigenous and you can't prove you come from Africa, you can't prove none of your people had a visa card and all this other stuff, because after 1870, the national the immigration law and the national nationalization act, they made, you know, the immigration and department and public service and how they do the visa cards and all this other stuff. So this is how they was, you know certified itself as United States itself was just recognized as a nation. So now they control who gets to come across the border. See how this go? And if you call yourself African, that means you're making yourself a what? Tourist. You're taking yourself out of your nationality status which means you have no control over your land. See why they did that? It's a war tactic. So going back to this, I'm sorry I had this wrong. So again, Nancy comes from, you can see the little thin line if you can. Nancy comes from, again, William Hodge and Margaret Cook. 
which made Murray Hodge, and then Murray Hodge had sex with somebody and made Murray nasty. Maybe I should never say that word, but you get it. You know how babies are made. The long story short, out there in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, because this is 1779, so what happened? We have to know what? Different wars going on at this time. American Revolutionary War. Indian uh, uh, skirmishes going on with different colonists. So Yamasee tribes having skirmishes down in Georgia and South Carolina with the colonists because they're stealing crops and stealing residue of the land. So I want y'all to know this stuff because once you know this, you'll see that the picture don't even go right that you bring in millions of Africans over here and at the same time you're going to war with the Indians over here. And then somehow they all end up dead within 100 years. Because this, again, this is 1700s. So you're talking about the 1800s, they ended up by dead by the 1900s. And in the 1900s, you just got Africans over here that was coming from, <laughs> coming from slavery. Yo, we got to do better. And we got to know that was like the wildest lie. They tried. Let's give it a hand clap. They tried. But my point is, is this. This is going back to show Henry Lowe, which goes back to, like I told you, England. I'm sorry, the wind is blowing. We go back to England, 1652. Now, the other paper I had... It's showing you that he goes back. It's showing that they had him on paper and documentation further than that. Let me show you from this side. See these again, the thin line. I'm not making this up. The thin line shows that he goes further. This is his family line. His family line. All right, wait. Hold up. Hold up, boy. Thank you. His family line right here. Hold up, boy. Hold up. Let me show them this. <laughs> his family line goes off into Pooter's Low. John Lowe and Prudy, Prudence Stevenson. See what I'm saying? Prudence, I'm sorry. Stevenson, which is a woman, and then John Lowe is the man that made Prudence Love. I mean, Prudence Lowe. And then Prudence Lowe made Henry Lowe. Prudence Lowe is a woman, and I know who the grandfather is, is Anthony Lowe. I don't know why that's up here. Well, you know what? That's what happened. Anthony Lowe is the great grandfather, but he's the one on that paper selling Henry Lowe into slavery, so he must have had custody. But that's neither here nor there. In black and white, he's the one on this indentured servitude paper right here. Anthony Lowe. See what I'm saying? They're selling Henry Lowe. Look at that closely so you know it's in cursive. Anthony Lowe. That's how I know it's him. It's popped up all on Ancestry.com. They're going to give you all the paperwork they got to do with that person's estate or name. It's the same word. Again, when we get into financial literacy, I'm going to tell you estates and I'm going to tell you about names. But anyway, like I was telling you, they go back to 1549. They go back to 15, 1535. 1551. See what I'm saying? All the way in Dunkirk, England, and I mean Derbyshire, Derb, Derbyshire, England, Derbyshire, England, however you say that, all that England stuff. Had them on paperwork. Because England was going by the old Italy or Rome law all on papyrus. See what I'm saying? This is what the European Confederacy was about when they all came together. See what I'm saying? Then we're going to get into history about where did Europe really come from? Is it really just Caucasians? Because it's actually not. The Etruscans is what started Rome. The Etruscans come from Africa. Like I was showing y'all on my Instagram, follow me at Hugh God. Um, the Etruscans come from Africa, like I said, in Algeria, Libya, and what you think of Morocco as of today in North Africa was all part of Rome for real. Later on, they got taken over back by Muslims. And Algeria, which Algeria is a Muslim name, was going back and forth. This is why I got Al, A L. Anything with Al is going with. Muslim. Muslim started their preposition, the official and proper preposition of sentencing around the world for all modern languages. After that, Spanish, English, and all of them followed up. This is why you get the or L, the E L in Spanish, and then English is D. All of these are preposition words to show you how to make a proper sentence, which came from Muslims who went around the world and taught everybody, and the Muslim, more specifically taught people in Europe. So what happened was they blocked our history out, making us go through a blackout like they did in the 1500s and made us lose who we are, forgot that we were seafarers and that we was the Phoenicians that helped everybody else have phonetic. We was the most bilingual people back in ancient times. 
and we also met the Muslims and the Moors too. This is why they had the five noble tribes or the five noble families, and we had the five civilized tribes. This was the third point of view perception from who you know who, the Caucasian, the European, who was breaking down our paradigm, who was breaking down our lifestyle, who was breaking down our empire, and then reselling it to us so we can re not remember ourselves. You get what I'm saying? It was just that easy. So the five civilized tribes, just like they didn't call themselves uh, Native American or not, until the ideology or the third point of view came here to try to study that, the five noble tribes just the five noble tribes, but we all did the same type of lifestyle. We had the same type of conglomeration because we was trading with each other. So the five civilized tribes over here would go meet them because they was the ones that was mostly in seafaring and go trade with Africans or trade with the five noble families, which we call the Moors. All of them was Moors. So this is why England was letting, and uh, Britain and Rome was letting a lot of edicts to go against the Saracens and the Motoros. These are Motoriscos, the people that was converting over here in America. Because America, again, and Roman, according to Rome, is called Marrakesh. Marrakesh. Marrakesh, which is the capital of Morocco now, which Morocco State is a corporation like everything else, wasn't founded until 1956. So we know we're not talking about the empire when we talk about Morocco that was founded in 1956. The empire encompasses a lot of land. And that was what happened. The empire encompasses West Africa and East, uh, East America. We was doing trade. That's what the empire was. It was a trust. We was doing trade. And we the ones that came up with this type of free government as a uh, republic and everybody was trading and uh, each kingdom and each empire, each kingdom within the empire was up to its own doings. So I'm saying? It was just up to y'all to do business, come trade and do all this other stuff. This is why they found in South America in ancient times around 1500s, they had guanine spears. Guanine spears have a metal alloy that is known from coming from West Africa and Ghana. We didn't make those spears from here. We may go here, but our go has a different metallurgy to it. They go had a different metallurgy. And you can study metal and sell literally where it came from. They had a more of a pristine yellow gold, a yellow type of gold in Africa. And when you study it, they know it come from Ghana. So you're trying to figure out how did they get over here in New Guinea, in South Africa. Look it up. Guanine spears. G-A-U-N-I-N. I always give reference points. I don't just talk. So Ben and I just showed you that these people did, that one side of the family did come from England, that branched off, and this ended up coming all the way back down to my grandmother's side, from my grandmother's, uh, let me make sure I'm right, my grandmother's mother's side, yeah, and my grandmother's father's side, like I told you, you can rewind the video so you know I ain't lying, that's exactly what I'm doing. got the paperwork, father's side stopped short because, again, they was literally out here, see, I can take my grandmother's father's side all the way back to except for Susanna because she was indigenous, my point. She don't have no paperwork after that. But Henry Lowe that come from England, they, this stuff keeps going back. We got 1510. We're going to be there 1492. 1492 is when they what? Was allowed to come over here and what? Explore. When they found the map in the 1300s and they were still studying and look up King James where he admits that he didn't know where Virginia was but he heard about Virginia. Because we've been doing trade already with Europeans too. The Moors knew about us and the Moors kept it secret. They didn't tell all the Europeans about who they was trading with. But when the Moors got defeated in Morocco, because Morocco ain't just the Moors, Morocco is just a place where the Moors was at, and they lost that fort. And Spain itself, where the Moors was at too, lost Cordoba to these new mixed breeds of, uh, to be nice, these new conformed Christians or Catholics who was all still part of the Roman Empire, came to take back take to take over Spain, because they wanted to say take back, that's why they called it a reconquest, but they never really owned it, because that's a whole other psychological warfare when you think Caucasians was still back in Rome. Back in the day when Rome was a visit, it wasn't Caucasians for real. Yeah, people looked dark, tan, like Spanish people, and again, Africans, my point. And then you had us selling over there, giving trade, or we'd sell across the Pacific Ocean. Because again, you have to watch out for the icebergs if you're going up top near Iceland, New Fountainlands, just to end up in Britain and England, and then to sail back down to get over top of France and London. That's how they was doing it, going into an A. Look at your map, as I'm telling you this, so you know I'm not lying. To sail through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you'll be going through the storms. This is how people was getting lost in the Bermuda Triangle. And before the Bermuda Triangle, it's terrible storms. It is a whole pattern, a circle pattern. Um, that doesn't even allow you to cross the waves. 
unless you paddle through it. So how are you gonna tell me somebody paddled through with an extra 50,000 or an extra 100 of slaves at the bottom of the boat? And you tell me they didn't eat for two months? It take two to three months to come over here without paddling the whole time, without a motorboat? It ain't three weeks. It already take three weeks though a month with a motorboat. It takes two months to three months to come over here without a motorboat. You people, man, y'all gotta stop it, bro. Let's stop it. They didn't do that. What they did was take people from here and take them to the islands. Then they took people from here and took them up north to the ice lands and all that to make it back to Britain so they could show them how to grow food. And then stole them because they didn't want to what? Take the extra manpower and energy to sell them back. Look up the Powhatan father, which the whole Pocahontas story come from. Where they sent Pocahontas out to England. They're rowing these boats, guys. No other way. Not to mention they're the last ones to make boats, but we're not even going to get to that, man. Now we'll get to that. Remember the 1300s is when they got their ups because China is where sold them the, what we call exilic powder because they was looking for the powder of life, but they ended up finding gunpowder. And the gunpowder they found helped them make muskets and stuff. See what I'm saying? 192 years later after the 1300s, 1492, they was using the muskets in war, uh, no warships to defeat the Moors over there. Then let me tell you something else they mess your head up with. That's how long they was going to war. They was going crazy because they didn't have resources, y'all. This was just about resources. That's it. They needed resources. They actually only got the coast of Africa because they only wanted forts. They just wanted to control the resources. It's like your body. They literally do like germs. How germs take over the pathogens, or they say open pathogens take over the, 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 the openings of your body. Once they take over the openings, it's why you get the stuffy nose. Or you get to want to throw up because your body is trying to reject the germs are trying to take over and make forts in the opening of your body so they can control your breathing, they can control how much germs come in and all this and manifest. That's why they call it a manifest. When the docks come and land, and it, they manifest on this boat. Let's break this on the manifest. I want y'all to know the body in the universe, the body in the universe is the same. You invert it. But again, I guess that's another lesson. I gotta compartmentalize my lessons to understand they done taught us how to see one track silently, so we can't even learn in a a full circle like we used to as a people. We knew that health was well. We knew that uh, math was science. We knew that uh, English had something to do with math because to make have to know math is to make another language. To to create a language, you got to know math. Uh, uh, we knew all this was all together. We didn't have to separate our minds like this. Um, that's what we have been done. The mind has been separated from the body. So uh, anyway, the other thing is is that they didn't enter Africa, y'all. They only got the coast so they could control the Mediterranean sea trades. Look it up. They didn't even get the Shaka Zulu until the 1800s. And Shaka, Luzu, Shaka Zulu in the 1800s, after they was already using muskets with us, we, matter of fact, we made the American rifle already. Shaka Zulu was still down there fighting them with arrows. <laughs> so look, and that's in the 1800s, 1836, I think, to be specific. Don't quote me. Go look it up. Meanwhile, over here, 30 years later from 1836, we were about to go through our first civil war. We already thought we made a nation, a corporate nation, as it is. We were about to go through our first civil war with the North and the South, remember? They just discovering Shaka Zulu. Meanwhile, our produce, our labor, our productivity is helping them go to war, go to war with the rest of the world, if you're not noticing. Then they lied to us as if they took over Africa already. A whole they didn't even get to the Congos until 1800s. Do the look up and do your due diligence on the conference, the conference in Berlin on how they were split up Africa and America. None of us was there. Even Africans wasn't there. <laughs> so what I'm telling you is you'll realize they've been brainwashing you, y'all. They've been we've been part of their prophecy. They kind of been prophesizing what they're gonna do. That's why they always say they're gonna tell you before they do it, not just to get your mind ready. Because the power is in the mind. If we can make you believe it, then it's going to happen. It's going to manifest. Hold up, what we got on this boat? <laughs> so I want y'all to see that. So anyway, let me show y'all some other family, baby. Show y'all some other family, man. And again, let's take note, too. Again, like I said, on this side of the family, where Murray is coming from. From the Henry Lowe side. Notice that again, she's coming from Pennsylvania and then down to Georgia where the riches are. Pennsylvania is where the Quakers are coming from, all the people in the north really, where the Quakers came from and they was taught how to what? Grow food. By who? 
Exactly, the air cords. See what I'm saying? Air cords. Constitution is written out of hemp. Aerocoys help them do that. But give me a second, y'all. The Aerocoys is also a third party name. Look it up. Aerocoys is a derogatory name made by the French as they were trying to turn them over. This is why we're prisoners of warfare. All they did was renege on their debt. They tried to call us Indian givers, and what they did was renege on their own debt, on their own debt and their contracts. See what I'm saying? The Aerocoys is a derogatory name. The real name of the Aerocoys is Honda Sonic. And they didn't even call themselves that matter. That's still the second point of view, but they just called them that because they meant the long house people. They used to make long houses. And the word palace come from us too. It's called palisades. They used to make long houses or palisades as we used to call them in the South. Because again, we used to all have different lingo. But we used to have some common lingo because we used to all trade with each other within America. That's what empowered us. And then we also used to trade without outside of America. See what I'm saying? So in modern times too, I want to drain y'all with being stuck back in the day. I need y'all to know where you came from so you know where we're going. In modern times, this is what Trump was saying about make America great again. You have to put the power in the local people's hands. See what I'm saying? And then, people like us who need to know who we are so we can go back to our land and start making the power and the riches flourish again. They don't want to give us that power back because we don't need them at that point. And we don't need to use another private company's monetary system certificates. It's called federal, you know, because we have our own trade system. And that would just be luxury if we want to use their money. Ooh. See what happens if we go back to our land? And we still have these iPhones with cars and clothes and as Drake said. But we gotta get to the fundamentals and not trade our principles and morals for the you know, use our soul for the world, the silver, you know, for the world, for the silver and gold. Yeah, I get the point. You get what I'm saying? This is what the point is about selling your soul. We be thinking about Illuminati and all that. We be going off, bro. Every day you wake up and you working for somebody else's interest, you selling your soul. Period. <laughs> it's not that hard, y'all. It's not hard, man. Well, I can also give you a rating. I got, you know, I keep the reading right here. Birth, death of Richard Bennett. Was born on 6th, October, I mean, August 6th, 1609 in Wivelscombe, Somerset, England. He was one, he was the son of Thomas Bennett, 1570 through 1616, and Anstey Thompson Bennett, 1880 through 1647. Richard Bennett is a, he is baptized at the Wivelscombe, Somershire, England. He is the son of Thomas Bennett, a member of a large family of England merchants, see, merchants, traders, y'all, traders, they is trading, they're literally traders now. Anyway, merchants who deal exclusively, exclusively in international trade, my point, and they're not the first ones. We've been doing international trade. We're doing domestic trade, and we've been doing international trade with Africans and English. I'm telling y'all, we started this whole thing. All I'm telling us is to get back into our full fold and live like our forefathers needed to live, like control our environment, our land, our nature, and be one with God. That's what we got to get to. So you know I'm not lying, so I got the name too, World Sky Skyyak. 1621, Edward Bennett, one of the large Great London and Amsterdam merchants, an auditor of the Virginia Company of London, which my grandmother was trading with. This is what brought me here. I get to that in a second. Patents a large property called Bennett's Waltham near the former Indian village of Warriskayak in what will become Isles of Wight County. Isles of Wight is an attribute to uh, their court system over there in Britain and stuff. So this is why he named the Isles of Wright. But the Indians over there, ain't no former Indian in the village. If, when you read the whole story, the village of the Indians was teaching them how to grow and all of this and trading with them and showing them the trade routes through the rivers. So what are they talking about? So this is what I mean by traders. They're trying to control our story and denationalize us in our face, which is discrimination, incriminating the whole nation, y'all. I want y'all to get that. We have a right to a nationality. So the world sky yoke, and this is how you spell it, y'all. This is not just the official name. When you look it up, they had different spellings because, again, that's a real Indian tribe 
that they had a name and they orally told their name and England people wrote it down how they how they how they thought it was spelled. In a way, or Skyak. And this is what my grandmother was already trading with before the colonists came. See what I'm saying? She probably was one of them. But if you look up the war sky, I all of them go back to being part of, because uh, remember how we did it was clan, tribe, then kingdom, then empire. So the war sky was part of the Powhatan kingdom. And the power kingdom is still part of the Moor tribe. It was part of the noble families or the five civilized tribes. Well, we get into that later. I can prove that later. Again, let's go back to the Virginia Company of London. How I know about them because my grandmother named Virginia, and that's the reason why. Because through the, the security and a, a faith and credit that these people was going to keep their word and we was going to keep our word, which we did. We traded them back in Georgia cotton. I got the cotton. I seen the cotton field. I got the pictures for that. Um, we traded them peanuts. My dear people are from Sylvester, Georgia. It's in Savannah, Georgia, which is the peanut capital of the world. Back in used to do, again, international trade, y'all. So what they was doing, again, at that time, Europeans was locked down our coast. To give you a better picture of what I mean by they just wanted the coast. They had locked down our coast, so we couldn't do trade no more without them playing the middleman like they always do and like they're still doing. And then we just want to complain about spurts and uh, spontaneous occurrences when we can control the whole board. Instead of just complaining, let's strategize. So, and we ain't got to be quiet about it. That's the only way we're going to have leverage if they know we tired of that. So, and this ain't 1921 where you could just blow shit up like this was uh, Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was a main headquarter. Because Black Wall Street wasn't just one Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Or it wasn't just one Black Wall Street that was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm sorry. You had Okakoi, uh, Florida. You had North Carolina, uh, Black Wall Street in North Carolina. You had it in uh, um, uh, Mississippi. You had a uh, couple jumps. Georgia, you got a couple jumps. But uh, Virginia London the Company is my grandmother's name, Virginia. And that's because they was proud of giving a conglomeration to the fact that their prosperity just came from a long, longevity and wealthy contract of them trading with the people who used to trade with them. Like I told you, the white girl, the white lady I showed you in my picture, my grandma picture, my grandma, my grandma was just a baby sitting in her father's lap. And she didn't even know what was going on. And her name is Virginia, after her aunt. My grandma's name after her aunt, which is my great aunt. Named Virginia, because it's the conglomeration for what's going on. See what I'm saying? The conglomeration for what's going on. Excuse my words, y'all. Again, we need a new language anyway. As long as you get what I'm saying. So, again, that's what took me to all of this when I heard Virginia. And I want to know where the word Virginia came from. And then you look up and find out Virginia is just like the other word about a body part. And I'm not going to say it, because I want kids to be able to watch this. But my point is, is that Virginia just means port. It's an opening. It means country itself. Country means an opening. It's not the whole land. So, with that being said, this is, means a country, an opening, company of London. Why? Because this is where London used to land at in Virginia, which Virginia also used to encompass North Carolina and South Carolina. So that'll make sense for why my people's all up North Carolina and South Carolina. Because that's all different tribes who used to trade with each other, like the Tuscarawas, Muscogee, Creeks, Naomi, see all the Blackfoot, everybody. Then you had the war, the Skyhawk Indians, uh, not the war Skyhawks, I'm sorry. Uh, Seahawks, I want to say. Seahawks coming from the southwest side, trading us rice and all this other stuff. We had a lot of things going on. We was flourishing. This is a Merican, Merkush. Again, going back to a Merkush being the capital of Morocco today because all of this is part of Morocco. They're not lying, y'all. But it is agents that's controlling these gates and this is why they're brainwashing you or funneling you to one track solid minded mind states so you won't see the whole picture. This is why I'm breaking the code with us being indigenous or part of the bloodline out of Tocton. Because we don't have to just bow to the Moors and say that a lot because that could be another corporate status. Shout out to Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Because when you do what I'm, if you know what I'm saying, or if you did your due diligence and read his paperwork, he perfectly geniusly set us up for the future. Because he knew they was going to do all maritime and corporate statuses. So we still can use the more setup. But somebody brainwashes not to understand how to be private citizen, not to be private. Not talking about sovereign citizens. Somebody's going around again controlling narratives. No such thing. Other thing sovereign is the trust or the state or the group entity of a, uh, uh, of a people. 
because you need someone to back you. You need to be uh, independent, growing your own food, all of this. This is what comes with being a sovereign. You're not a sovereign person or a sovereign citizen. That doesn't, that doesn't exist. See what I'm saying? So this is how you know you have agents controlling the narrative, y'all. Watch them. That's why I read my stuff in black and white. And if I don't have nothing in my hand and I'm just showing off the fact that I know it in my mind because I want y'all to start doing this, best believe I'm giving reference points like I was doing early in all my other videos that you can take and look up in my video. I mean, you can look up on Google. You can go get a book. Go to the Congress, the library, all of that. And then you come comment or make a, or a video chat me. Say, hey, I got a comment on that. Oh, you was right. Or I want to debate you on this because it really no argument. Only thing I say is what I seen in black and white. And the only thing I can tell you is what I have in all history or what I correlated with God in my own head because I can take one logical uh, statement or occurrence and another logical occurrence and I can make an educated guess as they say that this would could happen. And whenever I'm guessing, I'm always going to tell y'all I'm guessing, but this is what sounds logical from these two logical standpoints. I'm not gonna come off the whoop like y'all be like, well, da -da -da, and aliens and I'm not doing that, y'all. We gotta get back down to earth, y'all. Control our domain person, then we can climb to the top and be talking about all the other stuff out of space. But anyway, Richard Bennett arrived in Virginia in 1625, y'all. 1628, about this year, Richard Bennett travels to Virginia to take over management. Of Bennett's Walkum, of Bennett's Walkum from his uncle. Okay, so he came to take over, to take over management of Bennett's, the Bennett's homes. Walkum from his uncle. That's really how I say it. So don't think I'm really stupid. But they saying his uncle was the one that get to him that property. His uncle was already over here. So this is what I'm saying. People, they was back and forth traveling, and to give you a better look. Uh, look up the Federalists. Federalists are the ones who were mostly doing the international trade. And then the indentured servant servants of Britain, which was England, the regular common people that they were sending over here that was regular tradesmen or lower than that, because uh, some of them was uh, convicts. When you look that up, they were sending their convicts over here. They was just made to stay over here. They had to come stay on the land and do plantation work. You see what I'm saying? Indentured servitude. So all of them wasn't allowed to travel back and forth, as you see. This is why he said a big family. He was a merchant, a long-term merchant. He was one of the people who was looked at as prestige because, again, England started his business. So we're going to have a whole other topic on history, and I'm going to write a history book on how they reverse history and tell you how Britain and England started out from when, when the ice cap started overseas because nobody was in England. Nobody was in Britain at first. But we'll get there. See, we got to do our homework. They thought they got somebody. They thought they got us, y'all. 1628, about this year, Richard Bennett travels to Virginia to take over the management of Bennett's walking from his uncle, Edward Bennett. That's who was Edward Bennett's his uncle, as we seen on the Ancestry.com DNA jump. I printed out. In the next 10 years, he will patent more than 2,000 acres of his own and amass more than 7,000 acres in Virginia and Maryland. So again, when you read these words, don't let it just be one track silent and take one thing. But okay, this documents, this facts that we was here, but this facts that, because this is my immigrant great-grandfather again, that they came over here and we can move. Also take the fact that what they was doing what? Land patents. More than 2,000 acres of his own and amass more than 7,000 acres in Virginia and Maryland, which is not, this is not even his land, but he was coming over here doing land patents. Now, skip the modern day 400 years later after he done been enslaved, even with prisons of warfare, that's a better word, how the heck we don't know how to do land patents? How the heck we don't know how to survey our own land and start towns and start our own uh, housing compounds and duplexes and stuff? Our own stores and corner stores and grocery markets. And... Why are we so brainwashed to do what they want us to do and go register AOC with certificate on every day? Excuse me. Why are we so pressed to go play their game every second and then go complain about their game? You see what I'm saying? Don't you I hate that when you watch the children? I know you watch the children before you at the playground trying to chill and have you a brief moment in time while they go play. And they keep complaining. They talking about, she not playing the game right. You don't have to play with her. We have to play, go play with anybody. Why are you playing with her? They complaining about the game. And I know you play their game because we just pulled up to the playground. You see what I'm saying? It's like my dog is like, if they don't go play at the level playground. But see, we get this forced mentality from them because they were willing to force their game on us because everybody want our resources, but want to come to America and not expect us. See what I'm saying? Excuse me, looking around, watching phone just past me every day, and I like to hear my message. 
uh, black people, whatever, indigenous or auto talk town people, I want them to hear my message too. But, excuse me, when I look around, I like to talk loud and make sure they hear me. But anyway, we don't have to beg for them, y'all. We could be doing the same thing, land patents, which is how you really own land instead of going to the bank and then doing the interest and da da da, then getting messed over and becoming an indentured servitude via a social contract because you don't know what you just did. And now you gotta go pay that contract off via doing their interest because the money or the currency that they accept is in their interest and being made in their interest. See how easy that is? Why are we acting like weasels and rats and laboratory rats where we could just be manipulated to go find cheese and go through all these loopholes just to get it? We know where the gold is at. We, I gotta, we know where the value is at, y'all. It's in here. It's in the love. It's in the fellowship of our people. That's what they was looking for. And they converted and turned on us so they can go fellowship with their people and bring more of their immigrants over here from England. This is why we're losing. This is what Trump was saying. This is why it's not about racism. Notice that I'm referencing a, a Caucasoid. Trump, because he was right. That's why it's not about the what? The messenger is about the message. The message was we do need the local empowerment. The message was that he do catch that we bring more immigrants over here after we already got immigrants who think they at home and taking more money outside of and more resources because the money don't matter. It's the resources that the money is supposed to back. The substance over form. You're taking more resources out of our country. Because you keep bringing these foreign people over here and then ravishing in and starting uh, uh, chaos in their country and then bringing refugees over, there, over here just to set up some centralized stuff over there. And to set up that centralized stuff, you have to invest in it with our local energy, our local resources, our local labor. And it would do our local people get out of it, even though we supposed to be national, so I don't even care about everybody. What do the nationals get out of it? Y'all out here putting curses on people and on us because y'all doing bad backdoor stuff and then using our, our homeland as a fort and a high spot and a safe spot and then a come up to recompensate them with you, man. Y'all gotta see it because we all in trouble for this. Now that you're aware, hey, you didn't know, now you know. Now that you're aware, you gotta read that Bible. You're in trouble now that you're aware. You might want to cut this off, CIA. I know y'all watching. Richard Bennett is elected to the House of Burgess as a representative from Roar Skyak. Hold up, what did I tell you? See, that's why you got to read in between because in your head you'll think, again, in the former Indian village of Roar Skyak, in what will become Isles of Right. You'll think they're just wiping them out. No, they're doing it by paper genocide like they're still doing now by calling us black, which is still Negro and Spanish. Wake up. The game is, is this. He just said it. Richard Bennett is elected in a, to the House of Burgesses as a representative from Royal Sky Oaks. From the Royal Sky Oaks, meaning they're still active. And like I'm telling you, they're still prominent in their prestige, which means they're nationals like we're supposed to be. And that count, their, their vote counts way more than anybody else. They're the ones that's elected people. They're the people that's in a position of power to pit somebody in a position of power which is better than being in a position of power. You want to be the person that can pit people in a position of power. Don't let that go over your head. And my point is, that means it was very important. And that's what they were supposed to do because they're allowing these colonists to come over here and they needed somebody to transfer, uh, translate, I'm sorry, and represent the concept that was going on within that village. That's what made the village, the colonists and the uh, Indian uh, uh, tribes together, showing them how to share crop and do a trust. That's where the trust was coming from. And this is where stocks come from it's nothing new again we keep trying to run up under them we've been doing stocks we've been doing re residuals residue off the land we've been taking 20 uh square feet and whoop the whoop and then dividing it 30 percent go here 30 percent man y'all y'all crazy boy anyway the houses of burgess takes me into another convo house of burgess has also made me think of again my grandmother's my grandmother's mother, father, which again comes from this line, because his, again, my grandmother's mother's, my grand, my great grandmother's father comes from uh, here. Again, he comes back down from uh, Yamasi tribe. He's specifically from the Yamasi tribe. That's what I did my homework on, again, being a Burgesses. Because I was trying to figure out where did the Burgesses come from. Now, he's not related to this side, because remember, Richard Bennett comes from the one that Isaac Burgess married, which is how we all entangle at that point. Willie Lou Hill. Willie Lou Hill is what come from Curry Hill. Curry Hill is the one that goes down 
and she goes into Henry Lowe, excuse me. Feel what I'm saying? So what I'm telling you is, is that when I was doing my studies, this is how you should do your studies and do it diligently. Before I even got to all the rest of the paperwork, I was already stuck here trying to figure out, okay, again, like I said back here, why did Susanna at Bennett, why did she even have a last name? If it's going back to the 1600s, when we were just getting surnames, because surnames come from England, like I told you. Surnames was coming from the fact that they was owned and possessed by somebody else, by indentured servitude, by a whole other empire for Britain at that time. But my people, again, that comes from England, that Susanna Mary, which is indigenous, she was already over here. This is why you don't see the gray line. You don't see the gray line like you see right here because it doesn't continue. She was from here. They don't have no more records from her. And it ain't no African record. She's from America. He's from Britain, like you just seen. His father was slowed in slavery, uh, servitude, Anthony Lowe. And my point is, they come from Curry Hill, right? They all coming from Curry Hill, right here. Just trying to follow it up for y'all, so y'all know what I'm talking about. Curry Hill come made Willie Little Hill, okay? And that's who's coming from England down her line. And then she's still coming from the indigenous line, Susanna. So again, that's like I said, 1%, 2%. I'm not trying to diss them, because who's to say they're even Caucasian? Especially if you go do your homework about the Moors being in England. And in 1552, they had all these civil wars in England, see? And they were sending their prisoners of war here. And their wars was against the Sephardic Jews who was light-skinned and dark Moors. But again, that's another conversation. There was a lot going on. This is what they're all hiding. Anyway, I'm talking about his side, which is my grandmother's, my great-grandmother's father. His side, it was the Yamasee tribe. Specifically, this is how I know they didn't come from just North Carolina, they come from South Carolina and Georgia, which is all Yamasee. And the Yamasee used to be in cahoots with creeks and muskegees and all that, but do your homework. So, Burgess, when I seen Burgess, even I got this far before I even got to 1552 and all this other stuff I got on Ancestry. I said, like, okay, now where did that last night come from? Because before we even get to 15 or 16, we didn't people over here who was living out of bushes, like you say, after they don't they don't go back further than uh, 1700s on the other side that's indigenous. We still proved they come from Africa. And my point is, is that where did their last name come from? They had to come from their first encounter with the Englishman or their first contract and engagement with the Englishman. And when they became part of their colonizing program, they gave them a surname. And my point is, that's what made me look up this Burgess. And I found out Burgess is the House of Burgess, which is one of the first legislators' offices in Virginia. Like I said, Virginia used to encompass South Carolina and North Carolina. It wasn't no North and South Carolina. It was all Virginia. That was a real port. By the time King James came and set the search for it again in his edict, look it up, King James did not know. That's when they sent more colonists and then they colonized North and South and separated. The Carolinas, which actually Caro, let me show you how they get everything from us, is actually an Arabic word from being in the constellations after Mars or being in a certain placement after the house in the constellations of Mars. Just like Alabama, Isle, is also Muslim. Alabama means the bush clearers. Who used to clear the bushes and create mounds? Like I have another video I'm going to show you about the mounds that we created in the jungles and the safaris and the woodlands. Us. Because we made contact with the, again, five noble tribes of what? In Africa, the Ali, Days, Bays, and all of them. And we've been speaking Muslim and been writing in Arabic or not taking our hand off the paper, which is cursive. Let your mind correlate. Wake up, kings. Wake up, queens. So, Anyway, he come from Burgess, which I looked up as the House of Burgess. So this is how I know they're not lying. And I did this before I seen this, so this is how I know I ain't tripping on God not sending me the wrong place. I'm just showing you how I do research, because anybody can do this. Now when you see this on black and white, just like uh, uh, informant papers, or just like this or that, you're supposed to be ready to go and live and die for this now, because you know what's up, and you know somebody's playing with you. 1629, Richard Bennett is elected to the House of Burgesses as a representative for the War of Sky Oaks. Another thing. This is what we need to put back in position in our government because we the people are. Is the lower house legislation, what they took out. They took out the lower house because the lower house legislation always represented the what? The indigenous people. The autochthon people was allowed to use Richard Bennett as a spokesperson and put their hands on him like, hey buddy, we want you to do this and tell the colonists, hey, we want this, whether it's immigration laws or whether it was just uh new business laws on how much sharecropping was allowed to come from off our land and how much encroachment, because that's what the problems was, and how many encroachment, because they kept bringing more there, foreigners, like they're doing now, to take over our land. See what I'm saying? 
So, Richard Bennett Bennett becomes a commissioner for Royal Skyyard. See what I'm saying? So now he's a commissioner. Now he's pitting this stuff. He's befriending them. He's being nice and trying to give them what they want so he can get what he wants. And at the end, of course, you know what they're going to do to us. It's not just him. This is why they're agents. Again, look up the Federalists. He's going to do what he can. He might even fall in love. You know how these stories go. Like, damn, I don't want to do this to my people or to these people that I had babies with. But some of them are heartless. They don't even care if they had babies because they was born heartless. They sold them into slavery. So don't be beware of that. But my point is, is that they're back there messaging and communicating. Communication. Post to post. Back to England and back to Britain and back to Spain, back to France. Because information is the number one what? Currency still today. It's the knowledge that make us have it. That's the value. If we got the knowledge on how to make, how to make an iPhone, if we got the knowledge on how to make these cars, like how China do, they break down every new technology they get sent to them. They're going to break it down and re remake it. Why? Because they know the knowledge is, or the power is not trying to keep the person that makes it or stay up under the person that makes it. That makes you dependent. It's to have the power to do it on your own. That's how we're going to get independent, y'all. You got to start worshiping and idol worshiping them for the stuff that they give us. That's the sin. So, he becomes a commissioner. Having amassed thousands of acres of the land in Virginia and Maryland and imported 600 settlers. So you know I'm not lying, all black and white. He imported 600 settlers, many of them Puritans. Richard Bennett establishes a base of political influence. That was the whole game, to get political influence. So check this out. That's what I mean by reading everything. Not that the fact that Richard married a Mary Ann Longworth in 1601 through 1687 in Isles, Virginia, United States in 1641 because it wasn't in the United States at that point. See what I'm saying? That's why I say read this and, or read it with me and pay attention. They called the United States and at this point in 1601 it's not. That's why I said this side can fool that your people didn't come from Africa. They're still coming over here themselves by the tens, by the fives. How the heck you think they bringing you in groves? Anyway. It was just the states at this time. And the states itself was the sovereignty because it was a whole community of people. That's what made them sovereign. Again, not just the person. Mary Ann was the daughter of George Longworth and Margaret Trafford Longworth. You can read. This is you know how they respect their name so much. And remember, the United States didn't come together until they all united which is after many wars, which is after the American War, and, and after the Morocco Empire, which is on the Morocco Empire Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, is on the empire. I mean, it is on the treaty of the United States, peace and friendship between Morocco and the United States. Look up that, look up those treaties, the Barbary treaties too. On those treaties, you will realize, I got it, and I will show you again, that Morocco Empire, which is us, Recognize United States as a nation and that's what allowed them to do business and this also proves my point We're not arguing that we're talking about the Africa Morocco How do we know we not because Morocco Empire would not have to recognize and approve United States to do business on their land If they were talking about Africa, they been took over in Africa in 1492, right? That's how they got the map and came over here it's in the Indians that oh, I mean the Africans that they did capture They told on them and told them they were selling over here and doing business that's a whole other story. That's a whole other. Again, I got YouTube out of YouTube videos. Lucky I'm not the ones trying to get paid. I'm trying to get the message out. I'm trying to get this reformation started. Here we go. They wouldn't sign that they was talking about Africa. They already had it. They was talking about us. See what I'm saying? We was too deep and too far in. Again, they only had the coast. They didn't know how deep the United States, I mean, America went. They didn't know how many battles they were going to have to go through. They had to play friendly first. See what I'm saying? Because we are friendly people by nature. That's why we got to hype ourselves when they come to violence. But that's a whole other conversation again. Richard Bennett served as governor of Virginia in the House of Burgess. Because again, that's a legislation office. And served two stints on the governor's council. This is my, this is my people, y'all. See what I'm saying? Go, go. I, I, as much as you, as much as I want to say to get you, I'm going to go ahead and take your side. You know what I'm saying? Not take your side. I'm going to be neutral. And I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I ain't even go further. That's what I'm trying to show y'all. 
But we got to take our emotions out of it. This is what God is teaching us. We are getting taught now. Now we're getting advanced. The advancement is we used to be emotional, correlated, and related people, which is good. Because you got powers with emotion, intuitive intuition, and all this other stuff that's mental and spiritual. But now it's time to expand like the universe do because you are inverted, the universe. Um, they're teaching us how to get out of our emotions and be one with our heads. Again, the body and alignment. Even though they separated the mind and the body, it's time to put it back together. And it's time to be tactical, strategical, methodological, methodological, not mythological, methodological. You know what I'm saying? Methods. Um, it's time for us to be godly as we are. Not just light. Light is cool. But intrinsic or intelligent light is what we need to be. That means calculated like God is. Anyway, and served two stints on the government's council. Born into an English merchant family. See, again, they had prestigious. Uh, a prestige status over there, over there in, in England. This is why, again, his uncle or his father was traveling back and forth, or it was his uncle that gave him the business. His uncle was the one that gave him the business. That's why he was traveling back and forth. So, anyway, he came to Virginia around 1625 to run his uncle's estate, exactly, and set up about acquiring thousands of acres of his own, as well as importing Puritan settlers who helped provide him an important political base. In 1646, he led a force of Puritans to assist the exiled governor of Maryland and help start a Puritan migration to the colony. After Parliament's defeat of Charles I in the English Civil War, I told you they had civil wars over there, we ain't had nothing to do with it, but it was affecting us. Bennett negotiated the bloodless submission of the Virginia and Maryland colonies, which were the which were loyal to the crown. See what you know I'm saying? Because the colonies were trying to be separate and be sovereign as we're talking. They're trying to get their sovereignty from the crown, which had nothing to do with us. The General Assembly then elected him governor of Virginia, and during his term, because everything's on contract, so this is why they were trying to get out of civil ditch of servitude, but they couldn't because, like I just showed you, it was by contract that you were supposed to finish your seven years. It was by contract the colony was supposed to finish out their 50 years or whatever it was. Which were loyal to the crown, the General Assembly then elected him governor of Virginia, and during his term he tried but failed to politically unite then Unite the Chesapeake Bay colonies, like I told you, Virginia, all through Maryland, which is the Chesapeake Bay and uh, Potomac River. It's all what connects Maryland and Virginia. And during his terms, he tried but failed to politically unite Chesapeake colonies. Not long after Catholics and Puritans fought a bloody battle in Maryland. Why? Because Catholics didn't even like us. Puritans was in the middle. They was like Moriscos. They didn't care if he was Muslim or uh, Christian. They, don't, they just wanted peace and they wanted to make sure we was on respect each other values and principles because most of the values and principles was the same. This is where you get Judaism from. But the separation or the conflict, the cognitive dissonance was coming from the Cathars, the Catholics that I just put you on, the Cathars, the Catholics, the non-believers. In a way, remember they was the ones that's putting out the edicts all the way from Germany and Switzerland and Finland and all them up north states that just got their ice caps receded. So again, where did them people come from? We get into that later about Neanderthals. But um, the Cathars and Cathars come from that part. And this is why they put all them edicts on catching the, Mor the Moriscos and Saracens and all that. That was coming from the Catholic side. The Puritan side, which was what we call the um, the west side of Rome, which when, when Rome broke apart was west and east. The west side was the Rhines in Spain, which became Spain later on, the Iberian Peninsula. Yeah, you know, I do my homework on these people like they did as on us. They was Puritans. They was more like the ones starting Christianity because they was the ones that was getting influenced by the Moors. And if you look up the Moors, the Moors wasn't just Muslim. They just talked in Muslim because, I mean, they just talked in Arabic because Arabic was a phonetic that was out way before the word Arabia even existed because Saudi Arabia is a man who conquered that Middle Eastern part called Saudi Arabia, which is really Africa. So Arabic wasn't even a word. It was Arabic, Hebraic. It was silent like Hebrew or Hebraic is. It's the same as Hebraic, just with you thought, without you taking your pencil off the paper, like cursive is. And this went worldwide. But anyway, Morocco was more like a mix of Judaism, Jews. Look it up. This is where Yoruba tribe would tell you that they tried to say that we all from the Yoruba tribe. So look it up. Look up the Yoruba tribe, which we're all not from and we're not from. Look up the Igbo, who let the Nigerians in. 
which were red hats like the Moors. These are different segments of the Moors, different families, different noble prestige people who wrote in Arabic as we call it the day, but was not Muslims all the way because all, all of them wasn't Muslims or they wasn't all Muslims is what I'm saying, not all the way. Some of them was Muslims, some of them was Jews, some of them was practicing new Christianity. And with that being said, it came up with a whole new concept or some of them was practicing other things which which came to be known later as Christianity as that book was still getting written from the 300. 50s or 250 council council of Nicaea all the way up till now. I mean, all the way up till uh, 1600s. And my point is, those that concept and that idea of Christianity was formed from Judaism, the Tanakh, the Torah, and all that other stuff, which Morocco allowed people to be because it was a freedom, just like United States get this government style from. It was a freedom of public or a freedom of expression. Amendment two, feel me? Freedom of speech. You dig what I mean? We all had that. Anyway, the Great Assembly, the General Assembly, the General Assembly, Chesapeake say, like, okay, not long after the Catholics and Persians fought a bloody battle in Maryland, Bennett stepped down as governor, but in 1657, he helped negotiate a treaty that resorted or restored Maryland's charter rights. See, Maryland didn't even have its charter rights all the way because Maryland is from England. They can't revoke us because we're from here. We was just doing us before Maryland was here or before Maryland wasn't. Maryland go back to Denmark. But anyway, he then served, again, Denmark is where the Vikings are at. Look it up. He then served on the governor's council and as a major general in the Virginia Militia, helped defend the colony during the Second Anglo-Dutch War in 1665 through 1667. You hear that? He then served on the governor's council and as a major general in the Virginia Militia, helped defend the colony during the Second Anglo-Dutch War, which is the Anglo-Saxons and, and Dutch Dutchmen, the Denmark people, as I'm saying, is getting together. I'm sorry, not getting together. They're going to war with each other over different lands and spots over here. Bennett died on April 12, 1675, in Nancy Mun, which is an Indian name, Virginia, American colonies. Many descendants included Richard Bland, John Randolph, Arono, Henry Lee, Robert E. Lee, which is famous, and Roger Atkins Pryor. So I'm saying Robert E. Lee is famous to the Civil War. Look it up. So y'all gotta watch what's going on, y'all, because even the Civil War that Robert E. Lee is part of, he don't even know he's, again, got dark. I'm part of his family. <laughs> got indigenous. Dark indigenous part of his family. So that's why I was showing y'all the these people was just trying to take over, man. Like pirates, as they were trying to call it up. So, I did my grandmother's. I did my grandmother's. Mother side, her father and mother. Let's skip to her father's side. Her father's side was Arthur Smith and Roy Smith, as they called him. His father was Henry Smith. They don't go back no further. Why they come back from Ty Ty, which is the Indian name, Georgia. Tifton, Georgia, back in which now is Sylvester and Savannah, Georgia. Um, my point is, let me get this picture. It comes from Sylvester and Tifton, Georgia, y'all. And again, it was the greatest planters ever. And my point is there, again, documents don't go far because they're not from England. They're not in slavery. And they wasn't indentured servitude that long at all. It wasn't even part of the federal census. Because again, it was off the grid. This is our family that I was telling you that come from the Alabama line and Georgia line, from the Etowah Mounds. The Etowah Mound is what started the word Italy or town. Don't let them confuse you. Look up when Italy was made. This was after they discovered over here. They're going to tell you before, but look it up. Look up how long we've been traveling to England and in Europe and how long we've been traveling and I cut out uh, tree trunks. We the ones that started traveling the tree trunks and all this because the Pacific Ocean is what it's called pacific means peace we can travel over there in small uh sky acts if we wanted to or little boats without being flipped over because that river doesn't have storms like atlantic ocean does so anyway let me see i wanted to get to my people side as i said again my grandmother people come from that that georgia and alabama called the etwa mounds and anywhere they make a mound it's a whole town they was part of the clan and tribes and villages that was already over there they had nothing to do with the colonists until here. And this is probably why, because they went to war and the colonists started burning land up so people couldn't eat. 
And this is how you'll find people like Henry Smith, as I'll show you my other paperwork later. I continue this and make a part two. Shout out to the Indigenous Day Auto Talk Time Day. That he was found on military regiments in South I mean in South Carolina. By the time South Carolina was trying to hold his fort down and get his uh and get fortified and represented as a, a, a nation because they were doing nation states as a state, basically, separate from Virginia. Because remember, Virginia receded its land for South and North Carolina to exist. So when that started, they had to go to war. This was the Seminole War and all this other stuff. My point is, Henry Smith just popped up on South Carolina 16th Regiment, if I'm not mistaken. And when you look it up, he was a kid. He was only 12. So this is where I can also prove that the prisoners of war. If, if you, you don't wait for the people to come out and tell you straight up, oh, we just stole your great-great-grandfather and we made him part of the, the United States Army. No, you're not going to tell me that. They're going to just keep it regular or they're going to keep it on hush. But that is what's happening. When you read the story and then you find out, hey, they just skipped the part where, where did he come from? Oh, you stole him and probably killed his parents or his parents was probably stuck and ran away and this is when, because this is what? Matter of fact, it's perfect timing. Look at that. Look how much I know I can tell you to represent it. Because again, you only know what you know. So since I know something, I can give you correlation to where he was at, 1888. That's when they say he was born. Well, 50 years before that, 1825, uh, was what? The Trail of Tears, where Andrew Jackson did the Indian Removal Act. So his parents would have been part of that. And remember, the Indians didn't go peacefully. They was rebucking them and all of that. So they people was dying. People was getting bloodshed. And in between that, you had lost babies. And this is how you get my great great grandfather on a regiment at 12 around colonists that he don't know doing who knows what to him and y'all wonder why I walk around with this fire because the ancestors talking to me I know what's going on you didn't get from no damn Africa but you did was stealing from here and separated from his parents through those trail of tears and at 12 that means he was born in this uh, or at 12 that means he uh and shoot, he might not have been born there because remember, Ancestry is trying to give you a, a, a bout, a roundabout. When they tell you, they even say AB on it, so it's a roundabout birthday. You know what I mean? He was born in 1888 specifically. Could have been born in 1870 or even closer. And my point is, by the time he was on a regiment, the military regiment, he was already 12. So who knows what that man I've seen at that time? He was a boy at that time, my great grandfather. So I just want y'all to be aware of what's going on, man. Uh, it's scientifically impossible to bring people on a boat that you got to sail over here and not feed them so-called weaken them and all this other stuff and then they're gonna grow food over here and it's also illogical for you to say that you killed a whole nation of people called indians and brought another people over here all within 400 years 400 years people who live to 100 years there's only four generations for real y'all your great 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 grandmother your great 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 grandma only four grandmothers that means your great great grandmother would have something to say about this she would have told you about a boat at least they would have had the boat in the museum, like they got everything else, but they only got chains. All right, bro. I'm gonna end this here, make a part two. I just wanna drop facts and show y'all that I know for sure where I'm from. I'm not arguing with nobody, so don't never bring up any debate, nothing, unless they wanna just build. That's all we can do when you got facts. Ain't no, ain't no going back. Like I said, the word Alabama is Muslim. I can go through a whole bunch of stuff to show that we had trade with Africa, but we didn't come from Africa. You see what I'm saying? So it's a different thing and then we can go uh if the people do want to debate then again you got to start with logic and then now we can go off these certain bases and we can debate off if you think that well no it's just that we came from africa a long time ago before the white man and then we go into that conversation which still proves that we ahead of him and that we have national status but we can't debate that because that means you probably don't understand that it's two creation stories and that god not even going bibliography we can just go naturally without even being brainwashed and indoctrinated. Let's look around naturally. You can see naturally indigenous people are all over the world and all over the equator. And people and life is created near the equator. That's the incubator. And you can tell that people was made according to their soil. Our soil over here is copper and dark and mobile. It's no coincidence. We are raised from the soil. We made from the soil. You know what I'm saying? But that's another, again, conversation for need to debate. But you can't debate that we're American. You can't debate that America is the etymology or that root word go back to Meritacush because that's what Romans knew it as, Americas. You can't debate that the hills of Gibraltar, which is in between Spain and America and Morocco today, the state Morocco that was founded in 1956, touches Spain. And now it created a little river because it drifted off of Spain. So now it don't touch Spain, but it used to. And the hills of Gibraltar, where is that? 
And once you pass the hills of Gibraltar, you are in the middle of the Atlas Ocean. And you can go out west, which is known to be the Wild West or the Morocco or the capital, which is the real Marrakesh, the Americus. See what I'm saying? That capital, just like D.C. is to the United States. But D.C. is federal. D.C. is the United States. It's the same thing how Marrakesh is the capital. But this is Americus. This is the Americus. And our capital over there is and happened to be in what they call today Morocco. It's no different. We ran the same government. It's just an embassy. Wherever we used to go over there, we would meet right there in Morocco. Or we would meet right there in Marrakesh. And according to the Caucasians who didn't have no idea of traveling until the rights to travel after the Magna Carta in 1250, until they had the rights to travel in 1250 according to the Magna Carta, they had no idea about the map. That's what I'm telling you. This is why King James himself did not know about Virginia. And you can, tell in his, you can see in his document, he's asking about Virginia and requiring that his people go see about Virginia and correspond to him about what is Virginia and what's going on. But that's the end of that, man. We're going to go to part two. Uh, happy Indigenous Day of Talk Time. We're going to talk about American history. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't know what I'm going to name it, but anyway, whatever I name it, you're going to see part two come up.